Hey there. Happy Wednesday. Today I thought we could chat a little bit about how I light product shots. So we're gonna look at this one shot that I kind of cooked up in my dining room here to kind of go over and explain just generally how I attack lighting products and kind of what the differences are between that and lighting a face. So generally when approaching product shots, I light them legitimately the exact same as anything else. You got a key light, you got a backlight, uh, you got an edge light, you got some accent lights, and pretty much you're just trying to make a two-dimensional image feel three-dimensional. That is the exact same across the board when shooting everything. Um, now where the differences come in is kind of when you're actually lighting the product itself, but I'll get into that when I kind of get to those lights. So the first light that I set up here when doing this example shot was our background light and our ambience. Cause like I've said before, I like to always get my ambience set first because then that allows me to know if I have the firepower to light for this entire space. And then if I don't, I can change the set accordingly. For this ambience and the kind of background light, I used a 200D outside my window with a Fresnel on it. And I just kind of shine that through uh, the blinds to kind of let that pepper the wall a little bit, give us some specular highlights, give us some points of contrast. And then it also added some level to the room. And then the other thing I did to kind of boost our overall ambience of the room is I had, uh, I actually used the kind of ceiling fan light that's in here. Um, and I just unscrewed some of the bulbs that were hitting our products directly and kind of giving like ugly, harsh top lighting. And then I kind of left on the bulbs that were kind of just spreading ambience throughout the space. And now normally I wouldn't do this to create my room tone ambience, but just for this example purpose, I didn't feel like setting up a whole room tone rig or, or bouncing a leak onto the ceiling. So I just used the daylight balance bulbs that were in my ceiling fan and that worked. So uh, with that light combined with the 200D outside, that kind of gave us our room tone ambience and a little bit of, of interest in our background. And I believe that light outside the 200D was set to about 19%. The next light that I added was a top light, and this is something that I use literally every time that I am lighting any sort of product. I use it sometimes too when I'm lighting people, but 100% when I'm lighting products, I'm gonna use a top light. And the reason for this is a couple things. The first thing is I feel like it really kind of helps to show off the shape of products. Just having a soft top pool of light, it helps to really accentuate the edges and kind of just show how the product looks the best, in my opinion. Uh, another reason why I like using top lights when lighting products is because it helps to kind of remove weird uh, reflections more so than if you just had a side light, you're gonna tend to get more reflections on the logos or the words or whatever's on the product. So lighting with top light, you're gonna get less of that. You'll still get reflections, but I think less of them. Uh, and they're also more pleasing reflections in my opinion, rather than coming from the side. Uh, so those are kind of the main reasons why I like to always use top lights when I am doing product shots. So for this here, I had a Amaran two x two light mat overhead at 5,600 Kelvin at about, I think 7%. Uh, and again, that was just kind of to give us some shape to our products, uh, light them without giving any weird reflections and kind of just start building the base of lighting around our products and just kind of start separating them from the background. The next light that I added was another light to kind of help add separation and dimension to the product. Uh, and this was another 200D with a spotlight mount on it. Uh, this light here basically just kind of sat behind the two products, kind of up on a higher angle, splashing down at them and just gave a nice edge to the, the bag of coffee and to the cup itself. Uh, and also threw a slash across the cutting board as well, just giving us some you know nice points of highlight, a nice edge and, and you know just nice specular highlights to, to really kind of bring our eye right into the product and you know kind of give some more definition to the image, which again, we are always trying to make 2D things feel 3D. And by adding these kind of accent lights and edges, it really helps to do that. And I think I had that light probably again, also around five, 6%. The final light that I added here was kind of a fill light or a uh, supplemental key light, if you will. And this was really just kind of to help define the words on the product and really highlight the features of the bag of coffee itself. Because when you're lighting products, you know, the, the bags or the boxes that it comes in are, you know, what you're trying to sell as well, not just what's inside of it. Cause people spend a lot of time and energy designing these things. And so you want to, and it is your job to kind of show those off. Um, and so specifically with this product here, there was some gold foiling on the product and gold foil is kind of hard to light just because of the nature of it. It's reflective itself and you know, when you point a light at it, it tends to kind of wash out. And so you really want to be able to see kind of like the ripples in the gold foil. And so what I found is a good way to kind of still see those while also being able to light it uh, is to use black silk in front of your lights. So for this, I set up a Pavo Slim and with a four by four of black China silk, just draped over in front of that light. And what this kind of does is it helps to remove those kind of reflections and shine from your light. And it allows you to be able to see the, the detail in the gold foil there without washing it out. So. That's something that I think is really cool and, and is a fun thing to kind of play around with. And that's something you really need to be paying attention to when you're lighting your products is making sure that your light is not washing it out. Because when you're adding light, you're trying to add dimension. And sometimes with the different materials products are made with, it can wash them out. So really be cognizant of, of looking at your product and, and making sure that even the smallest of details are readable because they were put there for a reason and the client probably is gonna wanna show those off. The other thing you need to keep in mind is while black silk is awesome and it's really great for removing reflections from 
pretty much anything, not even just like for products, but for if you're shooting with like, you know, a wall of windows behind you, throw up some black silk and push your light through it and you won't really see it in the window. Or if you're like up against some like metallic lockers, this will also remove the sheen from that. Um, but the one thing you do need to be aware of is it eats a lot of light. So you need a very powerful fixture behind it, or you need to get really, really close to the subject that you're lighting, which is kind of what we did here. And even here, the Pavisum was at 100%, and it was like a foot away from the product. And all these other lights were at like 6%, 7%, 15%. And so you can see that it eats a lot of light, but it does work really well and it does serve its purpose. So I highly recommend it, but just make sure that you have the proper fixtures and settings for this to work. And yeah, so lighting wise, that is it for this. And I think it turned out looking really nice. After looking at the monitor for a little bit, I kind of, I felt like I wanted to add something else though, just to add some more movement or make it feel more dynamic because this was a, a you know, locked off shot on sticks and you know, nothing was really moving in the scene. So I was trying to figure out what I could do to kind of add some movement or flavor or just spice it up a little bit. And so what I, I thought of and came up with was kind of like, you know, this is for a bag of coffee. There's a coffee cup on the table. Like maybe I can add some, some steam to it and let that kind of float through the scene. What I ended up doing was just turning on my hazer and filling up a cup with haze and then just dumping that into the cup that was set in our shot. And that added a little bit of that extra movement and, uh, dynamic feel that I was I was wanting from this image. So you don't always need, you know, a camera move or someone moving through your shot to get movement. It can sometimes be something as little as, you know, have some steam flowing out of a cup and that will add some, some nice movement to an otherwise kind of uh, still or more boring shot. So yeah, that's pretty much how I attack lighting products. It's literally, 99% the same way as I attack lighting a human, except for there's just extra care and attention put into the packaging of the product. And sometimes you'll need to adjust things like using black silk for um, lighting the fronts of products or the logos of things, just to make sure that your light is adding and not taking away from the product and washing it out. Because, you know, you're trying to show off all the features and details of the product. And so if the light is washing it out, you're not seeing that. So you wanna just really make sure you're being careful and cognizant of all the little details and making sure that you're able to enhance them with your light and not take away from it. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for today. Hopefully you got some bit of knowledge or enjoyment or entertainment out of this video. And if not, as always, my apologies and I'll, I'll see you next week. Bye.